Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the oncological emergency spinal cord compression. Spinal cord compression, more specifically metastatic spinal cord compression, is one of the ominous causes of back pain, where there is a compression of the thecal sac and its components by tumor mass. The spinal cord is the continuation of the brain and brainstem, which all make up your central nervous system. It is surrounded and protected by the vertebrae. The bones. The spinal cord ends at about the L2 vertebral level where it has fibers continuing down called the corda equina or the horse's tail. Making up the spinal cord are many nerve fibers relaying motor information down to the periphery and sensory information from the periphery up to the brain. Spinal nerve roots emerge from either side of the spinal cord giving rise to the spinal nerves. For example, here is a superior view of the thoracic spinal cord. It has the thoracic spinal root emerging, giving rise to the spinal nerves on either side. The spinal nerves contain the sensory and motor nerve fibers. Because of its delicate, important nature, the spinal cord is first you know, protected by the vertebrae, the bone, and then also further protected by the meninges, made up of three layers. The innermost meningeal layer is the pia mater. Then you have the arachnoid matter, and then the dura mater. Above the dura mater is what's called the epidural space. We can find the venous plexus here, which drains blood from the spinal cord, as well as uh, you know, this area contains fat and arteries, which supply the uh, spinal cord with blood. Separating the arachnoid matter and the pia matter is the cerebrospinal fluid. Separating the arachnoid matter and the pia matter is the cerebrospinal fluid. The spinal cord is protected in this sac filled with cerebrospinal fluid, which we can call the dural sac or the thecal sac because the dural matter is the most uh, outer meningeal layer. Let's look at it at a different plane, a median plane. Here you can see the terminal portion of the spinal cord at the L2 vertebral level, known as the conus medullaris. The spinal cord is protected by the vertebrae, the bone, and further protected by the meninges, made up of three layers. The innermost layer is the pia mater, then the arachnoid mater, then the dura mater. Separating the arachnoid mater and the pia mater is the cerebrospinal fluid. The spinal dura is composed of a single layer and serves as the innermost barrier of the thecal sac. You can imagine the spinal cord sitting in the sac with this illustration. It's the same sort of principle. The epidural space contains the venous plexus, fat and other blood vessels and lies between the spinal dura and the bony ring. Spinal cord compression develops in approximately 2.5% of patients with metastatic cancer and may be the first presentation of someone with cancer. Metastatic cancer, of course, originates from a primary source, primary tumor, and this could be the lungs or the breast, for example. So these cancers will metastasize into the spine. Metastatic tumors in the osseous vertebral columns account for 85% of cases of spinal cord compression. As tumor grows in the epidural space, it generally takes the path of least resistance and encircles and compresses the thecal sac. As the epidural venous plexus becomes obstructed, basogenic edema may develop in the white matter and eventually the gray matter of the spinal cord. 
and this will eventually lead to spinal cord infarction. Another mechanism of spinal cord compression is through destruction of the cortical bone, resulting in vertebral body collapse. with displacement of bone fragments into the epidural space, which can thus compress the thecal sac. Another mechanism is paraspinal tumors or paraaortic nodal masses may invade the spinal cord through the neural foramen, causing spinal cord compression. Intramedullary metastasis can produce internal compression of the spinal cord and thus spinal cord compression. The primary tumors that are mostly involved with the spinal cord compressions and metastasis to the spine include lung cancers, breast cancers, prostate, and lymphoma. Most frequently, the vertebral bodies become involved by hematogenous spread. Primary bone tumors, uh, such as multiple myeloma and osteogenic sarcoma, may also lead to spinal cord compression. Spinal cord compression has a propensity for certain regions of the spine. The most common level of uh, spinal cord compression Involvement is in the thoracic spine between 60 to 80 percent, and this is followed by the lumbar spine, roughly 25 percent, and then the cervical spine. Multiple spinal levels are involved in up to 50 percent of patients with metastatic cancer to the bones. If the pressure on the spinal cord is not relieved quickly, it may result in irreversible loss of neurologic function. The most important prognostic factor for functional outcome is neurologic function before treatment. Hence, any delay could result in poorer functional outcome and decreased quality of life, with increased dependence on healthcare resources. The majority of patients will have symptoms of back pain weeks before neurological symptoms come up, and the back pain is usually worse with recumbency. 60% will have symptoms of weakness on presentation. Radicular pain, which may develop due to nerve root compression by the tumor or secondary to vertebral collapse may occur. Other features include sensory changes and urinary and bowel dysfunction. Spinal cord compression is an oncological emergency. MRI should be performed in suspected individuals for acute diagnosis. This is whole spine and even brain MRI. Suspected spinal cord compression needs to be treated immediately with steroids, and this is followed by radiation therapy, which aims to decompress the spinal cord and nerve roots via cytal reduction of tumors, prevention of progressive neurologic symptoms, pain relief, and durable local control. Surgery is another option if radiation fails. Surgery is also useful to relieve pressure within the area through, through decompression. Again, neurological status is the most important predictor of outcome in patients with spinal cord compression. Ambulatory patients tend to remain ambulatory, whereas non-ambulatory patients typically do not regain the ability to walk. Thank you for watching this video. In summary, spinal cord compression is an oncological emergency. MRI needs to be ordered right away and commencement of steroids to reduce edema is recommended.